The Lucas Oil Dick Weber PBA Playoffs are brought to you by Barbasol. Start your day with Barbasol Shaving Cream, America's leader for a close, comfortable shave. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By the makers of Bear Aspirin. Expect wonders. And by Go RV. Visit GoRVing.com to watch a free video. Go affordably. Go RV. This, the scene midway through the last match, Jason Belmonte's water bottle circled. And Brad Angelo steps up for the effort. And Brad heard something, and here are the following discussions. Come on, Jace. Come on. You didn't do anything? You're not crippling the stupid bottle? It's the third time you've done it. Jeez. No better than that. And, and then, just, just moments ago, head, after this match was completed. So I picked it up by the head, and it just popped, like, on its own. And then, I, understand. I didn't, I really didn't... Just a crappy thing. I, I really apologize, Brad. I, I do, I feel, I feel really bad about it, because I know that we only get ten shots. I understand. I just want you to know I'm really sorry. I understand, Jake. I understand. Thanks, Brad. I do, I, I feel miserable. Such a quiet location, Randy. Any type of noise is picked up. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, Jason Belmonte uh, didn't intentionally try to disturb uh, Brad Angel, but like you said, it's a very quiet environment down there, and sometimes you just get caught up in your own thing, and, and you don't realize that you're doing it when you're doing it, and un unfortunately, so stuff like that every now and then happens. West-Northwest region getting set, but first we fire up the... RV and we are back in action here next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, our continuing coverage of the Dick Weber PBA playoffs. And we'll continue on April 17th as well when we go live for the three-man finals of the Lumber Liquidators Dick Weber PBA playoffs. Time now for today's More of What Matters to You fan question brought to you by the makers of One A Day, and it is for that man, Chris Barnes, the number one seed in the West Northwest. Comes our way from Ryan Janes of Zealand, Michigan, and Ryan asks you this, Chris, how much differently do you think this Dick Weber oil pattern will break down today compared to during the week? Well, the re West region was really high scoring, which is the region I end up in this week. Uh, uh, but they played them further to the right. They played them eight, nine early, and they broke down. And he ended up around 13, 14, the deepest. Uh, with all the river we see on the show today, we're going to be playing them. I'm going to be close to fourth arrow, and that's going to be a lot deeper than I played him at any point uh, most of the week. So I would anticipate the scoring to be a little bit lower. Uh, but you never know. I mean. Uh, Three guys have been striking a lot, uh, you know, and Lenny's really put it on them. So we're going to try and keep up with him. And Chris, with that being said, as you migrate deeper towards the middle part of the lane, do you attempt or do you try to change release, try to create a little bit different ball roll to get your ball to finish harder down the lane? Yeah, I may have to go to the same release I used in the World Championships, uh, which is getting inside of it. Actually, that's what I'm going to try right here. And uh, just to create a little bit more angle through the pins. Chris, thank you for the time. We appreciate it as Chris continues to get work. loose for his regional <laughs> championship match. Get right get the front, get the, the sixth line. spot in our final six to be determined. Lenny Borch Jr., Lonnie Wallachek, or Chris Barnes. Who will move on? Find out with us. Up next, the final regional champ will be crowned. Chris Barnes has long been considered bowling royalty. This season, he added another jewel by becoming PBA's sixth Triple Crown winner. The West, Northwest region, the final piece of the six-man Dick Weber PBA playoff puzzle is to be decided next. Rob Stone and the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, welcome you back to Indianapolis. Time now for our winning touch, brought to you by Touch of Grey. Gets rid of some gray, never all. Today's winning touch looks back at the season's PBA World Championship. Chris Barnes made a little bowling history there. Qualified as the four seed for the season's first major. Took down Michael Haugen Jr., Oscar Palermo, and Sean Rash, and then finally the tournament leader, Bill O'Neill. 
the win. Barnes becoming just the sixth player in PBA history to complete Poland's triple crown. Jason Belmonte, our first number one seed to move on to our final six. Chris Barnes will try and join him as we get set for our West Northwest Regional Championship. A 13-time champion on the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour and Triple Crown winner, Chris Barnes. He owns two career PBA Tour titles and 10 regional victories, the upgrade, Lonnie Wallachek. An exempt player with 24 career PBA regional wins and three USBC Open Eagles, Lenny Borish Jr. And Lenny, the native of Kenosha, Wisconsin, kind of in between Milwaukee and Chicago, right there on the lake. We'll start off. A big Packers fan, a big Chicago Cubs fan. Roll it. His first career TV appearance. Three ten baby split. Leaves the three ten baby split. What I wanted to do. One of the best part-time players you folks at home have never heard of, Lenny Borsch. What was your line to me? Everybody on the amateur circuit knows who Lenny is. Yep. And Lenny will step up and finish this offering. And is clean through one. Doesn't look like much. Game does, is, isn't all that intimidating. But that man knows how to bowl and knows how to throw a lot of strikes. So does this guy, Chris Barnes, your number one seed. Boy, that lane's something else right there. Not a lot of love for that right lane early on from Barnes. Borsch taking a seed after that great spare conversion. And here's Lonnie Wallachek, native of Wichita, Kansas. He and Barnes went to Wichita State together, bowled for three seasons together. There's our first strike. Pretty game right there. Great balance of the ballot. He's a great athlete. Keeps himself in great shape. Barnes with the spare. Two spares and a strike through one. And Barnes was mentioning issues with the right lane. He doesn't have to finish on that lane. He'll finish the 10th frame on the left lane. Now this is accomplishing one of three Bowling goals for Lenny Boris Jr. making TV. Here he is, second frame. <laughs> Strike for the number one seed in the West Northwest. <laughs> Highest scoring region throughout this tournament. By far. And Borsch got the sex, six pin. Ronnie Wallachek steps up. Here's a look at Wallachek's arsenal this afternoon, going with tropical heat. Two, four, eight. Not that the easiest of spares you want to be shooting here uh, early on, but shoot it like you're shooting a bucket, and Lonnie should have no trouble making that. Now, Lenny Borsch looking for his first strike ever on television. Gets it. And the other goals for Borsch and Bowling, a USBC title, and back-to-back 300s. Wallachek, who Bowled collegiately at Wichita State University. Chris Barnes told us a great story about Lonnie yesterday. He said at one point in the season, he, he misses this one badly. He overslept for a roll call at 8 a.m., didn't go on the trip. After that, he would pull into the parking lot where the team would meet the night before, sleep in the car, and Barnes and his teammates would come by and knock on the window to wake up Lonnie to make sure he was on time for roll call. 
That is devotion. Back-to-back -back chats for Barnes going back to Wallachek. I, I don't know how you could effectively do anything, much less bowl, after spending the night in the car. It's good to be young. Well, when you're young, Rob, you're resilient mm -hmm. and uh, a lot more flexible. That's right. Barnes with an early 11-pin lead over Lenny Borsch, Jr. Wallachek. His second strike to three frames. Here's what Borsch has in his bag today. Oh, no. Well, we've already seen the 369-10 missed once today. And again, the issue being the nine pin, the back pin, tough to get to. Get it a little wide of that three pin, you don't cover it a little too far to the left, you chop it. This Barnes in complete control early on. Seven top 20 finishes this season for Barnes, looking for a strike in the fourth. And the 10 will stand. You know, if it wasn't for Mika Koivuniemi, Chris Barnes would have made the show at the TSC. He'd have made the show at the U.S. Open. I mean, this could have been an absolute banner year if it wasn't for his tour roommate. Another great spare pickup from Borsch. Barnes attacking the 10 pin. Drops that one. Time now for our bear pain relief replay of the match. Again, we talk about the difficulty of this spare, and it's that back pin, and Lenny Borsch made it look easy. Let's see if Lonnie Walchek can decipher the right lane. Got it there, back-to-back -back jacks for Walchek. Three strikes through four frames. But again, that open frame in the second. So through four frames, it's Barnes on top by 10. Mm. High on the right lane, light on the left. Remember, it's the two low scores that are out. The high score advances. Chris Barnes looking to become the second number one seed to advance in this tournament that's been full of upsets. This is the final. Regional championship. One of these guys trying to join the five others who've moved on to next week's show. Messenger drops the 10. That ball rolled out right before it got to the one three pocket, but because Chris Barnes is 16 pounds, that ball still had enough energy to get the messenger over to take out the 10. Oh, no. Borsch. Borsch. Skinny jeans. They fit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're all good. This ball comes off the spot, starts to go to, towards the head pin, then kind of rolls out. That's what 16 pounds and a, a good, nice, high rev rate will do for you. Throws Wall pins around. Wallacek has figured things out, looking for a three-bagger here in the fifth. Strike on that left lane for Wallachek as he takes a seat. Well, we are through five, and the Wichita State guys in the mix for the final spot in our final six. Chris Barnes with strikes in the second, third, and fifth. He's on top, but things are tight with Borsch and Wallachek in his rearview mirror. Welcome back to Indianapolis. Beautiful look at Lucas Oil Stadium. Great to have Lucas Oil on board. Doing some sponsorship now with the PBA, home of the Indianapolis Colts. Beautiful facility in downtown. We're just about 15, 20 minutes away from that stadium.
Coming away from Woodland Bowl, the West Northwest region continues. Barnes on top by three. And the issues for Borsch continue. Just one strike thus far. Yeah, and the way the oil pattern is broken down, it's not real conducive to what Lenny Borsch likes to do, and that's to go straight up the lanes or, or parallel with the boards. To me, it looks like the oil pattern's blown apart. You got to move in, and you have to open up the lane a little bit, like Chris Barnes and Lonnie Wallachek is doing. Seven resilient. Barnes, 13 titles, three majors, including this season's world championship, one in Vegas. Gave him the triple crown. His third televised appearance of the season. Yeah, and he was absolutely spectacular on that day. Pulled flawlessly. Came all the way up from the four seed spot. All a check. Looking for four in a row here in the sixth frame. Oh, really good shot. He really wanted it, only to leave a stubborn ring in ten. Lenny Borsch up now. Let it go, but... And the trend continues for him. Light on the left lane, heavy on the right lane. And that's the first spare for Wallachuk here in the championship match of the West Northwest region. Borsch down 14. Oh, what a pickup! Told you he could You don't make it this far, not being a good player. Does it perfectly, slides the two over into the 10. Boyd's an open frame. He's still shooting 195. Chris Barnes in the lead at 209. It's a clean game for Borsch. One strike. Six spares. Come on, Lenny, make the adjustments. Man up, throw some strikes, put some pressure on him. Well, I'm pretty good at getting at that same spot. Right now, this man looks like he's got the best ball reaction of the three. Strike number five. For Lonnie Wallachek. Barnes to close out the seventh. This would be his fourth single pin spare conversion should he drop the 10 pin. Which he does. Lenny Borsch Jr. up now, and here he is on his first match on television. Uh, I'm sure I'll be a little bit nervous, um, but I'm pretty excited about it. You know, it's been a dream come true and something I worked all my life for. So, uh, you know, I didn't think it was going to happen, and uh, it did. So I'm uh, pretty excited to get out there. At 48 years young, making his TV debut. And this is all you're going to see of Lenny. Well, in order to stay clean now, he's going to have to make the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10. You can see he's trying to move around, and, and he's just got to move inside to where Barnes and Wallachek are playing the lanes and somehow try to go around this oil pattern a bit more. So it looks like it's going to go down to the two Wichita State. The rollers, Barnes. The eighth. Yeah, it's the ball to drop. Well, he's getting his bowling ball to the pocket, Rob, but his down lane bar reaction is so subtle that it's not facing up and hitting the pins hard enough. It's not driving through the pins hard enough. 
He's probably using that ball because it blends the oil pattern out. It gives him the best look to the pocket, even though it may not give him the best carry. That's a kick out there on the effort from Boris. So his first open frame, he can only salvage so much. Wallachek with four strikes in his last five frames, coming off a strike in the seventh. Here he is to close out the eighth. He can take the lead right here with a strike. Remember, highest score out of the three moves on. Maybe. There's his first lead since the first frame. Solid. Real solid. Ball in the pocket. That's well, too bad. Lenny doesn't have the ball reaction that's conducive to what he likes to do. And without having a chance of throwing or stringing strikes together, his day is pretty much done. Now Chris Barnes looking to regain the lead here in the ninth frame. A double would do it. And there is your double. Big shot. Mr. Big Shot. I'll tell you what, he's been pretty clutch all season. Right now, that was a huge shot in the ninth frame for him. And so here's the deal. Chris Barnes can strike out and shoot 238. Lonnie Wallachek can strike out and shoot 245. It's going to come down to this next shot here by Lonnie Wallachek. This will set up the 10th frame for him. If he doesn't strike here, Chris Parnes can lock him in the 10th frame. And leave no. the 7-10. No. And, and that's not just a normal 7-10, Randy. That left, or I'm sorry, that 7-pin was pushed to the left and still stood. Oh. What a was terrible, nice. terrible break nice ball, for Lonnie Wallachek. This uh, split has only been made three times in the history of bowling on television. Lonnie Wallachek doesn't make it. He's going to have 181 in the ninth frame if he gets just one. Chris Barnes. Number one seed, Chris Barnes, up confidently. Yeah, sorry, uh, Rob. Chris Barnes needs good count and a mark. The best on the wall check and shoot now is 211. So Barnes now on top by 17 as he begins his 10th frame. May have just got his ticket punched early, courtesy of the pocket 710 left by Lonnie Wallachek. <laughs> Ten pin shy of a three bagger for Barnes. If Barnes converts, I don't think. And gets five on his spill shot, he will move on. Lenny Borsch Jr. is done with a 177. That's what Chris Barnes needs to move on, be the final member of the final six. There's your spare. Wolacek really had this one until that nasty 7-10 he left the last frame. Here he is in the tenth. Well, he was in great shape, and if he strikes there in the ninth frame, he could throw a double in the tenth frame, and no matter what Barnes does, he locks him out. And then, of course, you come back and you trip the fork in like that. And it, sometimes it's a really cruel sport. Barnes doesn't need a whole lot to move on. Oh, 
Winner Chris Barnes moves on. Another number one seed advances. Completely different than they were the rest of the time. Yeah, yeah, I know. I feel pretty bad though. So Barnes and fellow number one seed Jason Belmonte move on today. They'll join Jack Jurek and company. We'll wrap it up when we return to Indy. The Lucas Oil Dick Weber PBA Playoffs are brought to you by Lucas Oil, the world leader in high-performance lubricants and problem-solving additives. By Touch of Gray, gets rid of some gray, never all. By the USBC and its 2 million members. To find out more about USBC, log on to bowl.com today. And by Lumber Liquidators. Go to lumberliquidators.com for a list of our new store openings. And there's a look at your three winners today, Jack Jurek, Jason Belmonte, and Chris Barnes as those three move on. And here's how they did it, courtesy of the GEICO Championship Recap. In our Midwest Conference, it was Jack Jurek bowling a very tidy 221 to take down Bill O'Neill and the big nasty Wes Mowat. Then in the Southwest region, Brad Angelo bowls a clean 202 game. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be enough. With the help of two three baggers, Jason Belmonte squeezes out 211, beats Brad by nine pins, and Dino Castillo by 41. In the West Northwest region, it's Ronnie Wallacek trying to make a big move, but here in the ninth frame, it's a pocket 7 10 split on a double. Couldn't have happened at the worst time. Chris Barnes just needs a good. Tidy 10th frame, he does so, shoots 217, and he advances. So we take a look at our updated brackets for next week's show. Jarris versus Weiss, Allen versus Jurek, and then the battle of two number one seeds, Belmonte versus Barnes, and you can see that one Sunday at 1 Eastern from right here at Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana. 1 to 2.30 on ESPN Eastern Time. Well, week number one had upsets. This Sunday, two number one seeds able to move on. Jason Belmonte and Chris Barnes advance. For Randy Peterson and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.